Hi, Autumn here. Welcome to my studio. Today I'll be sharing my thoughts on the novel For the Wolf by Hannah Witten, which I don't have my copy because I returned it to the library. And I'll also be sharing my garden-inspired painting. Art That Inspires and Uplifts by Autumn Rosario Hall. Today I'm going to talk about For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. This is not an in-depth analysis, but rather a few of my thoughts on the novel. First of all, the novel is a fairy tale esque fantasy with quite a bit of romance. It's written in first person. Um, at first, it may seem like a Little Red Riding Hood retelling because the main character's name is Radaris, shortened to Red, and the antagonist slash love interest is called the wolf, even though he's literally just a man. But that's about as far as the Little Red Riding Hood theme goes. It's actually much closer to a Beauty and the Beast retelling. The basic premise is that Red is the second daughter and she's meant to be sacrificed to the wolf to save their village slash kingdom from this place called the Wilderwood, releasing a bunch of monsters from a place called the Shadowlands, which the Wilderwood is apparently guarding against or keeping back. It's all very hush-hush, veiled in myths and legend, and not really clear. And that is kind of an ongoing problem with the book. Um, the main character, the wolf, whose name is Eamon, has lots of secrets which he is intentionally keeping from Red, and nothing is really explained until basically very close to the end, so we're largely kept in the dark throughout the majority of the story. The main plot is Red dealing with her duty, um, some magic she received from the woods, which isn't really explained in for like most of the book, and trying to heal the Wilderwood, which is being injured for mysterious reasons, which I won't reveal because it's a spoiler. But that's the premise in a nutshell. So now I'll get into what I liked, didn't like, and why. First off, characters. I love fleshed out and nuanced, nuanced, bah! nuanced characters. And that is not this story's strong point. Um, the main characters, Red and Ammon, are pretty well developed, as is her sister, Neve, but that's about it. The rest of the characters are very flat, background. There's two other characters in the Wilderwood with Red, and I don't even remember their names, and everything they do is painted as ambiguous, so you can't really get a feel for them. Secondly, the world building is rather weak. Now, I'm not into paragraph long world explanations, but I do like it to have a strong sense of place. And this novel doesn't really do that. It's very generic Northern European-esque fantasy novel. Um, none of the trees have names, none of the plants have names, even though the forest is a huge focus of the book. It's always just vines and trees. It doesn't even say ivy. I know not everyone's as much of a plant lover as I am, and there are some beautiful descriptions of the fallen down keep where Ammon and Red live. It does carry its overreaching theme of personal choice throughout the novel. It's a pretty solid read if you enjoy fairy tale retellings, so give it a try. Please leave a comment if you read the book or plan to, and thanks for watching.